everybody. This is Gretchen Zellick and Annie Gibbons, and we are Donuts and Pie Fitness. And today we are lucky enough to talk to June Khan, who is amazing. Wait to hear all about her, but I want to say hi to June first. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you both, Gretchen and Annie, for inviting me here. I'm very excited and I'm, I'm just honored. Thank you so much for reaching out. I it's our pleasure, believe me. It's, so I want to tell you all about a little bit about June. She's an internationally recognized fitness instructor, leader, educator. She's a recipient of the 2009 World IDEA Fitness Instructor of the Year, which is a big deal. Um, she's a Pilates rehab specialist and owner of Center Your Body Pilates in uh, Boulder, Colorado. She um, It's an award-winning movement and Pilates studio which is in Louisville, but it's Boulder. She's best known for bridging the gap between Pilates and the fitness industry, um, which is a big deal. Because a lot of times people don't understand that you can do both or the, the way they all work together. Pilates is her passion. And with over 30 years in the business and a two-time cancer survivor, she is dedicated to her mission and it's called Movement Heals. And we'll talk about that a little later. June is master trainer for Body Bar Systems. She's a recipient of the 2017 Master Trainer of the Year Award for Savior Fitness. And those are they're the developers of Bar Above, Tabata Boot Camp, and Cardio Yoga. I think everybody would, who works out would know about them. She's a published author, a well-known fitness presenter. Um, she's been at a number of uh, conventions. She's wonderful. Uh, expert subject writer for the ACE exam. Board member of Physical Mind, excuse me, Institute Pilates, and she serves on the selection committee for ACSM, which is the American College of Sports Medicine. And that is a lot. That's a big resume there, June. Thanks for joining us today. Like when you listen to it, you know, I know it's on paper, but when you listen to it, like, oh, wow, I do have a lot of stuff I've done over the years. But you know, when you when you have when you have a career that spans over thirty plus years, I guess that's what happens. But anyway, but thank you, thank you. Yeah. So June, it, it's so funny when I, I was uh, getting introduced to you as well, I was thinking, wow, this girl's been busy. <laughs> been busy. Um, all right. So about 10 years ago, you were diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's follicular uh, lymphoma. And then for two years uh, after that, you endured chemo, but are today cancer-free. And you see the Pilates uh, pulled you through it. And there's no doubt that movement healed and inspired you. Um, so as a result, you've become a Pilates cancer exercise specialist and are very dedicated to what uh, Gretchen had mentioned, uh, movement heals, which is for cancer patients and survivors. So we would love to hear more about that uh, movement, movement heals. Yeah, um, well, movement heals is a hashtag that I created because of the fact that um, I, I've moved my entire life. I mean, my mother was a singer, but she had me in dance school at three years old. My dad was a professional baseball player. So he had a, we were always moving. So moving was a part of my life and there was nothing I could, and I can't sit still to be, to, I mean, it's just even here, just sitting at Zoom sometimes, I wanna get up. Um, but there's no question that the experience that I went through for those two years brought to life to me just how important movement is during a crisis like that because what when someone is diagnosed with cancer you know whatever whatever stage it is whatever it's, it's a frightening experience i actually passed out on the table and they told me because i figured how could how could that be me <laughs> i don't understand how that could happen and many people often freeze you know but what i found is that um in order for me to continue, I made a decision. This is what I made a decision in my head that I was going to continue moving and continue working even through. And I worked for Lifetime Fitness at the time. She referred to Lifetime Fitness or a big chain, and they were phenomenal in in allowing me to continue to work. I mean, I'd go do my um, uh, not shots, but our you know infusions. That's what they were called, infusions. And I'd come back and I literally be laying on the floor in my office because mm -hmm. I didn't feel so great, but. I can tell you that when I forced myself to get up, I felt good. And so I continued to teach my classes. They always had an, an, another person, another instructor there. I always had, uh, her name is Angel. Isn't that ironic? Her name oh. is Angel. I'll never forget. So she was my angel to this day. I just tell her she's my angel. And Angel would always be my backup in case something went wrong. Um, but I always can, I was able to teach when I felt my best. I don't know if it's, 
you know, maybe it's about being in the moment because when we are as fitness professionals, when you are in front of a group, you're in the moment. You can't think of what's next or, you know, what's going on at home. What You're in the moment and you're the most present that you can be. And I think that truly helped. But more than that, it was the movement itself that I really helped relieve to me the nausea. There is some research out there that I had found about, I'm thinking about a year and a half ago, that actually stated that um, they found that runners, when people, now they, they specified runners, and I, I would wonder, I would guess that it could cross over to everything else, that when um, runners exercised and they had cancer tumors, that those cancer tumors had the ability to be reduced so that they came to a correlation. There's a lot more to that study than um, um, we can go through here, but it actually showed that movement and exercise, but this was cardiovascular exercise, by the way, so it had to be cardiovascular, actually was found to be beneficial in reducing tumors. And that to me was profound. And I continued running. I didn't run for long distances, but all of that really helped. In addition to that, I decided that the best thing for me to do to make me even feel better was to really work with cancer patients. And at the time that I had my cancer, going back 10 years now, they've made phenomenal strides between now and then. But at that point in time, honestly, there wasn't a lot of exercise prescribed for cancer patients. Now, if you think about cardiovascular, cardiovascular uh, surgery, right? When someone goes into cardiovascular surgery and then they come out, what do they put them on? They put them on a cardiovascular rehab program. That's typically the protocol, right? There was never that protocol for that. And I remember asking my, um, my oncologist at the time, I had the best oncologist. He was amazing. He had love on his doors, you know, and every time I'd walk in the door, he'd hug me. He'd remember my kids' names. It was just a very positive experience, despite that it wasn't fun, wasn't a fun experience. So I actually brought it up to him and he actually had said, is there anyone doing exercise, you know, or prescribing exercise for some of these patients? And he's, he told me of one person that was not too far from me, contacted that person. But other than that, I really couldn't find anything. And lo and behold, I got hooked up with um, Andrea Leonard, who owns a CETI Cancer Exercise Institute. And um, when we got started talking, she was like, you know, we really could use something in, in Pilates. Um, that's a whole other story. I don't want to take up the whole time because that could take me an hour to tell you the whole story. But here's what happened. As a result of me working for Lifetime Fitness, um, I started going to... Um, a chiropractor because my back was bothering me <laughs> so believe it or not he was a chiropractor that also had a background in neuromuscular regeneration right he had worked with a neurosurgeon for years and he's in the market he's in the market for to bring pilates into his practice because he knew a lot of pilates and he wanted to be able to bring that because he was seeing a lot of cancer patients coming in so i started working for him part-time and i started working with cancer patients which is great because at the same time I was writing this program for a CETI. And I can honestly tell you, not just from my own experience, but what I dealt with, I lost a number of patients. You know, some of the, and that's the hardest thing to do. I even lost Dr. Josh's sister, who was only 31 at the time. Uh, she died of colon cancer. But what exercise did was mentally stimulate them. It took them away from uh, the depression that they were feeling. But I think... We, I think we all know that exercise has a certain amount of euphoria that's associated with it. The movement wasn't really heavy duty movement. It was, I would call it more restorative type movement is what we did. It was always on, a, it's always on the machines because I could support them when they needed to be supported and I could stabilize them and also could challenge them when I could. So that movement really, cre movement really helped them dramatically in being able to feel better about themselves that they continue to come beyond what the medical insurance plans would cover them. When I opened my studio, so I became certified not just in cancer exercise, but also in rehab. So I'm a Pilates rehab practitioner. So I took that experience and I opened up a Pilates studio. Now that was another story that I can go into. It just happened. It fell in my lap. It wasn't something I was looking for. And it was no joke. It's less than a mile from my house. I could walk there. I mean, it was meant to be. It was totally, totally meant to be. Um, and I opened it up and I decided to offer 30 minute, 30 minute rehab sessions for clients. And they are probably a third of my business right now. So we have associations with oncologists, chiropractors, orthopedic surgeons that, because we're in Boulder, we're in Boulder, Colorado. I mean, you know, yeah. we have a 
pre- fairly fit population. You know, it's like Brick, you know, you're in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. So, right. We have people that, you know, it's not going to stop them, but they need to have someone guide them after they're released from physical therapy. Because once they're, once they're done with physical therapy, many will do it on their own, but I'm going to say the majority don't, they just kind of go out and they don't continue with what they need to make sure that they don't re-injure themselves. So when I say rehab, I'm talking about rehab from injuries, but then I had a lot of cancer patients because I got, you know, a name for that. And I think, not think, I, I'm very confident that people feel good about working with someone that's been there, that's been down their road. Um, so with all of that, yeah, movement heals. I mean, there's no question. I mean, I have aches and pains. I, have, I, say, I think as we get older, we always have aches and pains. My back bothers me sometimes, my shoulders. The last thing I'm going to do is not move. Movement helps us heal the process. It brings more fluid to the joints. It allows the muscles, allows the muscles to to bring life to us. And you know, I, I know I sound like a, a preacher, but no, um, I really do believe that movement heals and brings one back to life. And the human body is resilient and it's the most amazing machine out there. You know, I also work with the American College of Sports Medicine and some of their research has shown us that exercise, um, I'm gonna say strength training, be more specific. And with weights as small as three to five pounds for seniors who have never done that before, has get, they've gained significant results when they never did it before. So that's pretty amazing that the human body can do that. Yeah, movement's gonna keep us going. That's what's gonna keep us going for life. Look at Jane Fonda. Yeah. How old is that woman? She's 80, 80 something years old. Look, look at Betty White. <laughs> like, right. We have these people out there that, you know, they don't let it, they don't let the world stop them. You got to keep moving. You can't stop moving. My motivation is my grandchildren. I need to be able to keep up with them. <laughs> and you know, they keep- Helen, the, Helen Hayes, there's a quote from Helen Hayes that is, um, when you rest, you rust. <laughs> yeah. I, have always, I love it. But there you go. I, yeah. I so love that. I never heard yeah, that. When you rest, you rust. When it's you rest, so you rust. You can't move. And how often, especially sometimes, I'm not used to sitting at Zoom calls like this because in my studio, I stand up. But we do a lot of Zoom calls now. That's what happened during COVID, right? We've had to do that. And networking. I'm telling you, when I sometimes stand up, it's like, whoa, it is. You know, and, yeah. and we move. So yeah. uh, can you imagine those individuals that don't? I'm, I'm involved in the project with uh, Linda Shelton right now. And I'm doing some filming for a seniors for Silver and Fit. I am loving it. When I mean loving it, and I'm in a chair. I They gave me the beginners. <laughs> so beginners sit in a chair and we give them exercises in a chair and the comments, because they're live on a Facebook page or YouTube. I, it's, it's unbelievable how excited they are. And if we can get this population moving, oh my gosh, we're going to live forever. I don't know. It's going to, it's going to bring a whole new arena or a whole new, now that we've got, you know, we've got baby boomers, we've got seniors, we've got to open up new categories. What happens, yes. you know, when they turn, you know, when they get older. Anyway, I know I'm going on and on. But. No, but it was funny because I was, we spoke to Linda about that silver and fit program and it's phenomenal. I did not realize that you really, the, the Facebook aspect of it and the, the, the interaction is if that is so key, especially for people over 50 and when you're, you know, during a pandemic. And they need the um, community. I, exactly. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I love Pilates. And I have found that one of the first things I had to do was be more mindful when I was doing Pilates. And it really requires that because you're moving, but you're also isolating parts and you're thinking and you're doing, you know, you're just, you have to do it right. So as a Pilates instructor, you have talked about specializing and making people feel good about themselves, empowering them with the ability to challenge themselves, to recognize that they're stronger, that then they believe that they can get healthier, that they can move. So how does Pilates do that? And how can people over 50 make that happen? How, you well, know. The, the beauty about Pilates, and, and for those who don't know, Pilates is not new. Pilates has been around since 1920. That man started creating this program in the 1920s. So how profound is that? And he firmly believed that your muscles, this is a quote by Joseph Pilates, your muscles must obey your will. It's not the other way around. So when we get lazy, um, and here's something that I tell new individuals that come to my studio all the time. When we, when a newborn or an infant comes into the world, We don't teach that infant how to raise its head. We don't teach that infant how to sit up. We don't teach that infant how to roll over. That infant intuitively understands because the body, the human brain and the body is set up 
to understand how to move a certain way, right? We don't, they walk when they, we may want them to walk faster than they walk or not, but they walk at the, they do it on their own. And if you ever watch a two-year-old squat, if you ever see them squat, it's just amazing how they can hang out there forever. Granted, they've got much limber, you know, joints than we do. I get all that. But their spinal li- alignment is always in perfect line. You could run a plumb line from their ear to their shoulder to their hip through their knee, and it's going to be perfect every single time. So when Joseph Pilates created all this work, that's he did a significant amount of studying to what was available to him at the time. And in 1920, what was available, fitness was not an option at that point in time. Fitness didn't come into play until the military, into the 40s. He had yoga, yoga, because how many years old is yoga? He had the circus. Can you imagine he went through circus, through boxing, all of these things that were out there. What did he do? He studied movement. So the name of his first book that he wrote was called Return to Life. In his um, interpretation, What that is to mean is that what Pilates does is returns your body back to the point in time when you were young and we reconnect those neurological responses that go in a sequential pattern. Um, That happens whether we think about it or not. So if we just do this with our finger, we may not be thinking about it, but there's a special special neurological response that's going from that brain to that finger to bend that, that finger. That's what Pilates does. Pilates creates when that creates, it brings back that mind to body connection that is so relevant to any human being at any age. Um, And as we get older, I think that's even more important because we tend to get in bad habits. You know, in his generation in the 20s, I remember grandmas would say, stand up tall, stick your chest out, no, 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 you know, we, and, but Today we're in. Look at we're sitting at a we're sitting at a Zoom meeting, right? So, and I have two grand, I have four grandkids. Two of them are addicted to iPads, and when I see them addicted to their iPads, what position is their body? They're here. Yeah. That's not the normal position. What Pilates does through the exercise, the exercises that we do, it allows the brain to reconnect the correct stimulus. Excuse me, allows the brain to send the correct stimuluses to the body through the exercises that we do. There's been some changes over the years because back in the 20s, the program was had a lot of spinal flexion in it mm-hmm. um, because they, they stood up like this all the time. So we've had to make some adjustments along the way. So those adjustments are being able to understand where we are in today's society and bring about those exercises that are more balanced in life. And in a Pilates exercise, we never stop moving. We use 100% of your muscles 100% of the time because when you're do whatever exercise you're doing, something is moving in the exercise, maybe an arm, maybe a leg, maybe a knee, right? but something's not. Something's moving, something's not. That's life. In life, something, I'm sitting here right now, my hands are moving, but what's going to keep me strong is my torso stabilizing to keep me in this upright posture. So that's what Pilates does. It teaches the body how to understand to stabilize when it needs to stabilize and to mobilize when it needs to mobilize. And in, and in the, at the whole time, being able to maintain that neutral spine and working through all three planes of motion. That is vital to any individual, whether they're five years old, or whether they're 95 years old. And my audience, or I should say my participants in my classes, I specialize in active aging, active aging, but we have I have 20 year olds that come in as well. I have 15 year olds that come in as well. And to see how this affects everybody, I really believe that no matter what you do, Pilates is going to make you do it better. You know, if your housewife is going to make you do it better. It's one of the most profound exercises out there. And I'm 67 going on 68. I wouldn't be able to do the things I do if it wasn't because of Pilates. So I know that. Amazing. That is just, it's amazing that what it provides and, and your explanation of it, it just, your passion, your enthusiasm about it. It's just, um, it's, it's incredible. It, obviously it has done wonders for you. And I know Gretchen, I personally haven't ever done Pilates, believe it or not. Um, but try well, it one day. Yeah. And that's I what I tell, like tell new people, you know, the yeah. worst thing that's yeah. going to happen is you're going to get hooked. So. That's right. I know one more thing I don't yeah. have to um, but, right. So you pretty much did answer this throughout your, uh, throughout your answers, but we asked this to everybody is, is what is your suggestion for aging enthusiastically? How do you enthusiastic? I think the number one thing is number one, accept that you are aging. 
I think that's number one. Acceptance is number one. You have to accept that. You know, I think there are times that, you know, sometimes I scroll through Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, if I go, no, I have to accept my age, accept who we are. And I think real important is you've, you've got to maintain your health. I think that's, that's really, really important. And don't, the, oh, the reason that my cancer didn't, I caught my cancer in time is because I was going, I went to my OBGYN, my OBGYN, she, she, I was going for a regular pap smear. She noticed something. She noticed something. She didn't like it. And she sent me to go get a test. So don't miss any of those appointments. I think that's, that's really important. Um, move every day. We said that already. You know that we've got to move every day. It doesn't matter. Gone are the days where like, oh my gosh, you have to do this for 60 minutes. You have to, no, move as little as 10 minutes a day, because if you move in as little, that's by the way, that is my mission. My mission, when I say my mission statement is that I want to, I want the whole world to understand that moving in as little as 10 minutes per day will have a profound impact on their health. I think that's really, really important. It's as middle as 10 minutes a day, get enough sleep. Yeah. I, I was one of those, I was one of those crazy people that could take the red eye. Jump. I don't even know how I did it in those days. When I think back, Fred, I Fred and I talk about that. And it's like, I don't know how we how he did, but you have to get enough sleep. That's really vital to our health. The rest is so, so important. And you know what I really think? Um, find what you love, find your bliss, know what your bliss is, surround yourself, be social. And that's important, be social and, and family. I mean, surround yourself with family. I don't know what I would do without my grandchildren. They don't, we don't live in the same state. What I would, what I don't know, what I would do without Facebook, Zoom, FaceTime, all this. I have a grandson. He's six years old. And when he calls me, I can't get him off the FaceTime thing. So when I, mean I can't. So I'll say, it'll be an hour. It'll be an hour. And he'll say, but why do I have to go? Because I have to cook dinner. What do you mean? Can't you just put the, can't you just put the, 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 the iPad on the kitchen counter? I'll, I'll talk to you. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, that fills my heart. You, you've got to fill your heart, find your bliss and fill your heart. And, and, and don't chip yourself of anything. Do do what you love. This is the best times of our lives right now. I'm still working because I love it. You know, my husband, <laughs> I, I'm new, newly married five years. I was married for 25 years before. And, it, you know, it was what it was supposed to be. I'm married to a man right now. And he doesn't understand our industry that much. And he's like, how many jobs do you have? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, but I love what I do. You've got to love what you do and maybe working is not, this is the time, do what you love, I think, but to stay young, accept, get enough rest, keep healthy, move every single day. I think that's what's totally, totally important for us to live a fulfilled life, so. Absolutely right. And you are so full of energy. I love it. It just comes right off the screen. Uh, <laughs> speaking of social media, we can find you Instagram at June Con, Twitter, yep. June Bug One. June Bug One. June Bug One. Because somebody out there, believe there's another June Con out there. So June Bug One. June Bug was my nickname. June Bug One. June Bug One. But June everything else is June uh, Con. All the other ones are just June Con. Easily to find okay. me. And then center your body, Pilates. And center your body, Pilates. Yes. Yeah. Good. 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 And we'll make sure we post that um, on the interview at the end. And June, thank you so so thank so much. You guys. For with us. It was so much fun and you just have so much energy and I'm going to go have to go do some Pilates, I think. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing what you do. It's, it's oh, an honor. Thank, thank, you, thank so you so much. much. It was really good talking yeah. with you. We'll catch thank up again. Yes, we will have to. We should. Right. Thank you. It's All been right. a joy. You have Thanks. a great afternoon. Take care. We'll Bye-bye.